Well, Bonnie, this week on the Pope on Film podcast, we are watching yet another film based on a novel by legendary author, screenwriter, former cocaine enthusiast, and suicidal redneck moss person, yeah. Mr. Stephen King. Oh, how many Stephen King movies we have discussed here on our podcast. Oh, so many episodes Yes, has, have been focused exclusively on Stephen King because he has made so many um, books that have been created into so many movies and we have done so many of them. So very, very many of them. Of course, the first Stephen King movie we ever yes. did was in our first episode, which was all about the chilling horror film Stephen King's Rock of Ages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bunny, why don't you go ahead and describe to us a bit of the plot of Stephen King's Rock of Ages? Stephen King's Rock of Ages was a very fond look back at the Castle Rock characters and the places around Castle Rock. Um, mm -hmm. In a very... Um, like in a Green Mile way, okay, it's a first-person novel, and it, like in Green Mile, it was the it was the cop who was the chief on on the uh, death row. Yeah. Him remembering back when he was in a nursery nursery home, that is the same kind of thing, except it's looking back on Derry, uh, not on Derry, sorry, on Castle Rock. Eleanor, stop. <laughs> Yeah, go, go. You have a piece of paper, color. Of course, my favorite uh, Stephen King film that we did was episode 93 Stephen King's Batman versus Superman. Yes. That was a good, that was a good movie. Funny. Why don't you go ahead and describe to us a bit of the plot of Stephen King's Batman v Superman? Batman v Superman were Stephen King's Batman v yes, Superman. Batman v Superman were nicknames for these two kids that were in two rival gangs. And this was this is one that was set in Derry. Yeah. And one of them was called Batman, the other one was called Superman. Because the, the Superman was called Superman because when he was a kid, he tied a towel around his neck and jumped off the roof. Yeah. You know? So yeah. everybody called him Superman to, like, tease him and make fun of him to do something so stupid. Um, Batman got his nickname because... I don't fucking know. Man, I don't know. I was on such a run. His drunken dad used to beat him with a bat. With a bat. That's good. Thing. Yeah. That's good. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was all the drunken father. Yeah. yeah. And the whole and the whole story revolved around the drunken father and these kids' relationship. Yeah. And 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 of course, of course, if you're talking about Oscar, oh oh, and of course, one of our biggest episodes. In, in in terms of Stephen King, was episode one hundred and nineteen Stephen King's Casablanca. Stephen King's Casablanca, yeah, that was a real departure with him with the whole medieval setting. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it was it, Casablanca was much more of a fantasy novel with wizards and shit like that. But it was in Casablanca is where the dark man came from. Yeah. The man yeah. in black came from, um, from Casablanca. Yeah. And of course, if you're talking about Oscar movies, uh, -huh. of course we got to go back to episode 112, Stephen King's La La Land. Now this one, yeah. now this one I remember. This one, of course, I remember. It's all about a drunken man and his girlfriend who may or may not exist. And this man is haunted, haunted by the ghost of jazz.
And now here we are once again discussing a, a Stephen King movie, a beautiful movie that I both loved and hated, 2017's blockbuster IT, all about a scary guy who's really good at fixing computers. <laughs> Oh, wait. It! I read that wrong. Yeah. It! Now, I want, I want to get right to my theory regarding this film. It took me a long time and a, a couple of different watches to reach this conclusion. The first time I watched it, or the first time or two that I watched it, I just wasn't sure how I felt about the movie. Yeah. Probably because there are a number of people in my life that are just absolutely freaking obsessed with this movie. I'm not and, seeing it. And loved it and, and obsessed with the clown and, and just freaking in love with this film. So so it, there was a bit of a hype that I couldn't avoid that was already in my head when I saw the film. But then I saw it and I'm like, OK, I don't know if I like this or not. I'm not sure. So so it took me a while to get to this conclusion. But after a, a few watches, it became clear. So here, here's my theory. OK, I I really like this movie. I like it a lot. I like the script. The characterization is really good. You feel that you know these kids. The cinematography is freaking beautiful. There are some just beautiful images in this film. I really love the kids at the center of this movie. And I really like the changing of the timeline from like the 50s and 60s or whatever uh -huh. to the 80s. I, and I also think that that added to the popularity of the movie because you see this film and you go, hey, it's like this is the original Stranger Things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of there are a lot of Stranger Things tieovers. Yeah. Oh, so Stranger Things is based on this. And I feel that that's one of the reasons why it was so successful. That Stranger Things was so popular that they made a version of it so people can go and see Eleanor! What? Do you want your own podcast? Is that what you want? You want your own podcast? Is that what you want? No? No? You just want me to not talk? Is that it? You just want me to not talk? You can get off of that chair. If you can get on the chair, you can get off of the chair. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take her off the chair. You can get off the chair yourself. You don't need me to get you off the chair. And where did you get the pen? You wrote all over yourself. Come. You don't get the pen. You don't get the pen. You are a living scribble right now. She's telling. She's telling on me because I took the pen. No, you get no pen. Yes, please, abduct her. I don't know why you haven't already. Okay. Um, yes. What do you expect me to do with this? Change her. You go a little more. You're twelve. You change her. Change her into a. Change her into a why mute. And this raises a question that I would like to pu pu put to our audience, okay, uh, as I do from time to time. Question, should we Does anybody out there actually know of anybody who got blood poisoning by writing on themselves with a pen? Okay. Yeah. Remember, yeah. that's what we were always told. Yeah. You, you you can't yeah. do it because you'll get blood poisoning. Yeah, I also heard that you can't write on yourself with a pencil because then you'll get lead poisoning. Yes. Is what I was always told. I was also, and, and, and I, I just want to move this slightly to an adjacent category. Okay. I oftentimes we'll eat like grapes or strawberries without washing them. 
and I will be told by people who will remain nameless, you didn't wash them, you have to wash them. And it's like, oh, yes, because of all of those people who died from eating grapes. <laughs> like, I understand that, yeah. like, gardeners or whatever, like, freaking farmers use chemicals and this and that, but no one's died from eating a strawberry. <laughs> Well, I I don't know. I, I it's certainly not going to hurt you in any way, but yeah, I, I I would have to wash them after seeing all the people with their genital genitals in the produce bin. Genitals in the produce bin. Yes, that sounds Everything like everything is fine. Like- the cartoon. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I, also, a, a small aside here. We had a table of it at the bookstore. Yeah. And we we got the sign that, that said that was advertising the table. And we attached to that sign a single red balloon that Ooh. floated above the table. Yeah. To let people know that that's where it was. <laughs> it, oh, do you have the book? It. Oh yes, look for the red balloon, and it became a thing, and people were, were freaking out about it. <laughs> it was a nice touch. It was a nice little touch. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't a corporate mandate. That was just our store being awesome. So I liked it as a film. It is a good film. I liked this film, film wise. It is a really good film, and I liked the film, film. Yeah. But, that being said, this is a shitty fucking horror movie. It's mostly jump scares. Yeah. For one. Yeah, there's nothing at all in this film that is in any way really scary. There's... There's no one that's going to get nightmares from this. I, There's... I have I have never been picky about movies of books I read. I understand that they're two separate yeah. entities for the most part. Yeah. And there are some things that you just can't do on film that yeah. has the same kind of kind of impact in the book like you really can't have Richie Tozer being getting chased by the teenage werewolf. You know, that yeah. would that would that would look ridiculous if you're going for a real horror movie. Where in the book, that's fucking horrible. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> so so changes are I don't really mind changes, but I think they twisted this story out of completely out of where it is yeah which from there i'm just kind of like me you know and i I, gave it i gave it two watches yeah i i don't think it does a very good job of of character development i'm really not feeling these kids Oh, okay. Yeah, you just watched a pack it. of kids. You you watched it twice. Yeah. Okay. I I thought you were giving it some sort of a a review. Oh no! So I just, I give this movie two watches out of five. <laughs> stop, Eleanor! Stop, <laughs> Eleanor! Stop! I thought it was like two out of ten watches. I did not like this film. Yeah. I give it twelve. Uh, plumbuses <laughs> out of a out of a possible thirty. Yeah, 30, uh, well, plumbuses. But no, you watched it twice. I got yeah. you now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. And I would, I would rather watch Stranger Things. Stranger Things is more it than this it movie. Yeah, then this it is it. Right. You in Stranger I, I, Things, you can really feel those kids. You know who those kids are. 
they're very distinct characters and because of that you care for for them a lot you know i i didn't much care I, the closest one i cared about was the kid from stranger things yeah you yeah. know <clears throat> yeah i've been watching random episodes of stranger things lately yeah and whose fault is that Deanna's fault <laughs> it goes back to her again well i gotta give her two points for that at least stranger things and, i like know, stranger it, things and natasha has people come over on saturday nights and we we hang out and we watch old episodes of supernatural it's supernatural saturday and it's a it's a family it's been a tradition for quite a while now maybe like a year year and a half something like that yeah but anyway um deanna has decided that eleanor stop spilling the water no no what oh not at all she's been standing on my balls for a while and yelling hi at bunny yeah <clears throat> and spilling water. So so Deanna doesn't really have internet at her home. Oh. So when she comes here, like she's like, oh yeah, we can watch Supernatural and also I can be on my computer and I can finally do all the internet things that I want to do. And so like two weeks ago, she just, or maybe three weeks ago, she just decided, hey, maybe... Before we watch Supernatural, we can watch a few episodes of Stranger Things. And then the next week, hey, yeah, no, we'll no, totally. Then, then she stopped wanting to watch Supernatural once we got started so she could watch more Stranger yeah, Things. Yeah, so she could watch more Stranger Things. And now she's just yeah. coming over to watch then, Stranger Things. And convention, she came over to watch Stranger Things. And then last, <laughs> last week, she came over and instead of watching Supernatural, she wanted to watch Stranger Things. Yeah. Yeah, so there's been a lot of Stranger Things in the house, so I've watched a number of of random episodes of Stranger Things because, like, I, I, if it's on, I will watch some of it, but I don't know. I've watched maybe, like, five episodes of season one and two. Yeah. But just to be clear, once again, I told everybody in the house this. No one was that good at Dragon's Lair. That pissed no, me off. No. No, no one and was I, that good. That I was a, a bitch. And I told Jeannie all about it too. Cause even yeah. if you could, you had to get it at the, at the exact second, at, at the, the exact, exact second. second that it flashed on, yeah. in the direction that you had to go. And the only yeah. reason for that was to see the next section of the cartoon. It was barely a fucking game. Yeah. Yeah. It was really just a laser disc that you kept changing the menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's but all it that looked it was. Great. Oh yeah, it looked amazing. Yeah. In in uh five to ten second intervals. You know what well, you know one that I really liked in the arcade? I really hmm. liked um I really liked Gauntlet. Uh, uh, welcome treasure 100 points. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was always the beginning of gauntlet. And I would, and I would play any of the characters. I didn't care. Cause it was just so much fun when other people yeah. jumped in. Yeah. I was always the ax guy. Yeah. I was always the, the barbarian with the ax. Welcome. But I remember Treasure. being the elf a few times. I remember being Valkyrie once or twice, if that was the only character open yeah. and I can grab a spot. Yeah, I had a lot yeah. of fun with Gauntlet. I used yeah. to play Star Wars a lot. I don't know why. Yeah, that was a weird game. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the preview for Rampage? No. Yeah, it, it Dwayne the Rock Johnson stars in his latest big budget action movie, which is based on a really wonderful shitty video game. <laughs> yes, Rampage was fun. 
Yeah. Rampage, yeah, you let your aggression so, out. Yeah. So he's like a, I don't know, zoologist or something. I don't know. And he's he he has a good, close relationship with this ape that, that he talks to named George. And then there's like a some sort of chemical spill accident. And suddenly George starts growing. Next thing you know, <laughs> George has grown to be like 50 feet. And he's destroying the town. And and the government that. comes and gets the rock. And, and uh, it's like, yes, we need to find George and the others. <laughs> and is all like the others and the guy the government guy's like oh you don't know about the giant wolf yeah. <laughs> and at first when i first saw the preview i thought for sure that this was like a, an expensive funny or die parody yeah nice you know you know like you know like dwayne the rock johnson in Dig Dug. <laughs> like, however ridiculous that would be is yeah. how ridiculous the actual preview for Rampage looks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 the, it came out a few days ago. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I am. I'm, I'm going to have to check that out because that, that yeah. sounds my brain is taking it very seriously yeah and a serious version of rampage i think would be hysterical yeah no it's a serious version of rampage oh they when i first saw the preview like i'm screaming because it's like yeah okay we get it there's george and there's the wolf god damn it where's godzilla yeah where's godzilla godzilla has to be in this and then finally they show the the title Rampage, and then you see like this l- l- giant creature f- f- swimming through the water, <laughs> going towards the town. And I'm like, "There you go. There's Lizzie." Uh huh. That's a really good game. No, I That's love that. Game. I love that game. I'm assuming that the film is going to end with George accidentally punching a neon light fixture and then shrinking. Yeah. Because that's what always happened to me in the game. <laughs> it was a great stress relief game, though. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So you don't just have to stop. Shit. Hey, you are the monsters and you just have to smash all the buildings. Yeah. No, that yeah. was a great game. Love that. Yeah. Plus, it was the closest thing that I could get to playing a Godzilla game. Yeah. At time. Yeah. So, so Bonnie, uh, back to it. What are your thoughts on the filmmaker separating the adult and the kid portions of this story? Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, in one part, I I think it's a really good idea. Because you do have to do it in two movies. So these will both be two separate, self-contained movies. Yeah. You know? So maybe the second one will be good. You know? Yeah, the the thing that worries me is that the way that, that Hollywood is with movies like this, I could absolutely see them having the adult portion just so it can be a trilogy. Yeah. You know, so the adults get two movies. Oh. I could see that happening. I wouldn't agree with the thing is, is for the most part, for the most part, the adults talked about when they were kids. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but at the same time, it's like, who cares? This isn't it anymore. <laughs> so yeah. what yeah. difference does yeah. it make? Go, go ahead. Yeah. Do, do whatever. It's not my yeah. dime, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, now, I, I don't care that it's been made. It hasn't ruined anything like people bitch about, you know? Yeah. But, and they do. But, but the first it is not a good movie. Let's let's be honest about this. But it is much truer to the book. Yes. You know, the best part yeah. of that the best part of that movie was Tim Curry. 
Absolutely. Tim Curry's performance was awesome. Incredible. Yeah. Um, and the rest of it was like, meh. You know, I mean, what do you want out of a made-for-TV movie? Yeah, there's only so far a made-for-TV movie can go. Yeah. And it's got what? Adam Green? Is that that kid's name? I don't remember. Uh, Robot Chicken. Um, Buffy the Vampire. Seth Green. Seth, Seth Green. Green. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only person I the only people I remember are uh, John Ritter and Tim Curry. That's all I remember. <laughs> and John Boy wasn't John Boy in that? John Boy was in it. Yeah, um, that's all Olivia, I remember. Olivia Hussey was in it. I mean, that part could have been cut. That wasn't, you know. I mean, I understand that you're going to have to cut stuff, but even the stuff that they were showing, it was like, it was like, okay. There's nothing about these kids really that's a part of it. They got the same names, vague mannerisms, you know? Yeah. There's really no, there's really nothing that's like binding them together like you had in the first movie. Yeah, you know they became friends, and then they started telling about the shit that's been happening to them. Yeah, you know, so they had an all equal share. Where this time it was just like all pushed off on Bill. It's like, well, yeah, that's that's not the story though. You know, right. and so I I get to a point where it's like. Yeah, okay, whatever. It's just it's just not it. It could still something could still be a good movie and and not be representative of the original source material. But I didn't think this was a very good movie. I didn't I yeah. the the kids did not emotionally get me at all. You know? Maybe maybe and, one of the reasons why I liked it more than you did is because this is pretty much that's pretty much the age I would be that I was in 1989. Yeah. So I I felt I this film gave me a lot of nostalgia for a film that's also about killing children. Yeah. There there was there was something about this that was comforting to me because it really brought me back. Mhm. And I will defend to death the new kids on the block song hanging tough. <laughs> so regardless of your thoughts on boy bands or new kids on the block, you can't you can't uh, deny that that's an awesome beat. Yeah. A good beat is a good beat. And that's a damn good song. That's right. Love that song. It's, uh, there was something else I wanted to mention about it. Oh, it, it's at this point in time in the big shoe that one might expect to hear me discuss the film's stats or the story's history or yeah. the history of Stephen King or even a lengthy discussion on the made for TV movie and Tim Curry. But I'm a wild card, bunny. Yeah. I'm, I'm an outlier. When people expect me to zig, I zag. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to forego the stats because, hey, this movie just freaking came out for shit's sake. If you want stats, get a subscription to Entertainment Weekly. And I'm <laughs> not I'm not going to discuss the made for TV movie because Tim Curry is a goddamn God. End of discussion. Instead, yes. I want to get to the real meat of the discussion of this film. Uh-huh. Why do so many people want to have sex with Pennywise? This Pennywise this is, is kind of cute. I, 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 this I, is a thing, buddy. Yeah. It's a big thing. I'm not saying I want to have sex with him, but, like, I, I can see it. Yeah? He's too cute. The way I figure is that if anyone actually listens to this episode, then there's a good 64% chance that they're listening to this episode because they have a hard-on and or a... a that spot for a freaking killer clown. Let's put oh. it this way, okay? Let's put it this way. 
if I came across some some Pennywise porn, and I liked how the co-star looked, I'm gonna watch it. So, I I actually got an interview with Emerald. I'm not uh, gonna search for it. <clears throat> it so many people are obsessed with Pennywise and want to fuck Pennywise that when. I told Emerald that we were doing it this week. She immediately gave me like this embarrassed face. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, wait a second. So, you know, right. People do want to fuck Pennywise. And she's like, yeah, yeah, no, a lot of people do. <laughs> There's this specifically one. of it, it Also, I'm, a, I'm pretty sure that uh, Deanna does. Yeah. Uh, going back to Deanna, who this entire episode is uh, dedicated to, apparently. We, we might have to do a poll question on Facebook about that. Yeah. We, we might have. Bruce Bruce mentioned getting the polls back. Yes, that is right. That uh, is right, he did. Yeah. He's a would, good you, would you fuck Pennywise? Or do you yeah. know anybody who would fuck Pennywise? See, the the one funny thing to me is that I, I on Instagram I follow a lot of close friends and people who I work with and people who I went to school with and family friends and porn stars and uh, cam girls and uh, uh, dominatrixes you yeah. know the typical type of people that you follow on Instagram yeah and. One of them is a a a, a, a woman, uh, a Marshmallow Maximus, okay. and she's the, she's this young, pale, blonde woman with big jugs, and like half of the time she's posting like uh, <laughs> pin up photos of herself, but the other half she's just sharing pictures of her cat or showing her. Uh, drawing style she's a huge fan of manga and she draws a lot of manga yeah and then she saw it and everything changed <laughs> suddenly all she's drawing is pictures of pennywise and sexy pictures of pennywise and she's buying all these it products and there's pictures of her with all of her it products and she got a cardboard cut out of pennywise and she has it in her bedroom oh, and then man. And then, and then she suddenly, all of her like sexy boudoir pinup type photos are all of her dressed as a clown. Oh! <laughs> and I'm like, damn, you want to have sex with Pennywise? This is a thing. <laughs> So I really wanted to uh, to get to the bottom of this. So I went to the, I, I I went to the one group of people that I knew would be able to help me with this. Okay. Natasha's supernatural fans friends. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, honey, you, you you're talking with your uh, supernatural group, and she's like, I always am, and I'm like, okay, do me a favor, ask them if any of them want to fuck Pennywise. Or if they know anyone who does. Yeah. And then all of these comments come. Nope. That's a no for me. Can't say that I do. Uh, if Steve would like to learn more, though, <laughs> here, are some links. here are some links to some Pennywise uh, erotic fan art. Here's some links to some Pennywise e erotic fan fiction. And uh, apparently there's a number of uh, erotic fan fics out there. Because you know, Bunny, yeah. Sam and Dean, the brothers, they fight demons. Yeah. So there's a lot of Sam and Dean and Pennywise. Pennywise. I can see Sam it. Yeah. There. yeah. A lot of them. <laughs> I have learned. Anything. That is what oh. I have learned. So who am I to judge? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're happy, whatever. Yeah. But but what they told me is that um what uh, Natasha Supernatural fam told me was that 
the word that they kept using over and over again. Fear kink. Fear kink. Yeah. Huh. And I think that that's probably like I hadn't thought of that. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but I I believe that gets to the bottom of it, you know? Well, how much stranger would that be than tentacles? Yeah, I imagine I imagine tentacles would fall under that umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would say if we put them on an evolutionary tree, they would yeah. have to be tentacle porn first and then and then get into like full blown monsters and horrible. Yeah. 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 Fear kink. Yeah. At least according to uh, uh crazy supernatural fans. <laughs> that, that is that is at the bottom of why people want to fuck Pennywise. Yeah. I, I I think I, I think the guy at whatever uh, Peter Sarsa Sakara guard, yeah, whoever the guy is, Peter Sarsa Sakar Nakara guard, whatever whatever the dude's name is who did Pennywise, yes. I think he who he, is who is Thor's friend's son, <clears throat> yeah. Like Peter's, when Thor's on Earth, he hangs around with that doctor and and Betty, what her name or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he yeah. was played by something Skarsgård. I forget his first name, but a but a long time character actor. Yeah, and this one's his son. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, the Thor doctor guy. Yeah. So, like, I thought he did a good job. He's definitely taking it in a different route, and like, good for him. But also, I don't, I just don't find him attractive. <clears throat> Without I, the creepy, I don't makeup. think I've, I don't think I've ever seen him. Not as Pennywise. I hear I, he was in, oh, what True Blood. Oh, I, I, I never saw that. But uh, yeah, I never watched that, so I, I have no real idea. I always thought what he that, looks like under that. I always thought that True Blood was a really original, unoriginal idea. Yeah, that that True Blood was like hailed for its originality, but really, all all that that someone did is that an author like saw Interview of the Vampire and said, "Okay, let's do the opposite of that. Let's make them poor. Mm -hmm. Let's make them live in a ghetto, in a shack in Alabama." There yeah. you go. Let's just do the opposite of this popular series. And that's how we got True Blood. Yes. So it's a very original, unoriginal idea. Mm -hmm. And his voice, it was, his voice was right for the makeup. But his voice wasn't right for Pennywise. There was no, I, I didn't feel threatened when he was speaking. He had to actually like split his face open and shit to to get any any horror cred, you know? Yeah. 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 It wasn't a good horror movie. I mean, Tim Curry was really fucking intimidating. Hell yeah. And hell and yeah. Now he was a he was a prick. Yeah. You know? Now Tim Curry Pennywise, that is one that that I could be scared of. Yeah, yeah. Cuz cuz he was a cat playing with a mouse. Yeah. You know? And, and he was having a good time. Never thought these kids or adults could beat him. You know? Yeah. This Pennywise seemed like Wishmaster, <laughs> okay. Wishmaster, where he would just try to try to throw horrible things at the kids, and the kids kept winning. You know, yeah. So, like a totally different vibe. Yeah, one of these days we should do the mini series, but in no way right now. No, because I need no, I need freaking space. 
this uh, is this is a movie that I need to like get away from for a little while, okay? And forget like try to get it out of my head that it's it. Watch yep. it again and see if I like it then. I mean, cuz if I if I could divorce the two from each other, it might be a good movie. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm I'm not seeing it. it you know, just like just like um, the Dawn of the Dead remake or Godzilla. Yeah, you know, I like yeah. Matthew Matthew Broderick's Godzilla. It's just not Godzilla. Yeah, no, no, no. It is in no way Godzilla. I I I like the Dawn of the Dead remake. It's just not Dawn of the Dead. Oh hell hell no! You know. So if I can if I can get out of it, because because with all the hype, I I reread it, so like it's really even fresh in my memory. Wow! You know, if I could forget about it and watch it again, I might like it more. Yeah. But no, I was I was like, what are you even doing? You know, God damn it, the black kid only gets so many lines. Why are you giving them to Bill? Yeah. yeah. Why? The black kid the black kid got Ernie Hudson. He totally got Ernie Hudson. Yeah. And he was Tim fucking Reed motherfucker. Come the on. Black kid the black kid upset me because the black kid was indicative of one problem that I had in the movie where it's like, okay, in the book, like in the book, like when were those kids around? What was it like 1959, 1962, somewhere yeah. around there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, so that was the time that the kids were growing up. And now, of course, we're going to set this in 1989. So, hey, look, new kids on the block. Hey, look, there's Tab Soda. Oh, look yeah. over there. They have Walkmans on. And here's a black kid from 1959. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> like there's no there's no other there's no way to like when it when it came to the kids there were certain things where it's like someone should remind the filmmakers this is the 80s yeah he he could have just been from the bad part of town you know if you want to kind of update and maybe he went to a different school small changes like that and you could still get the same flavor out of it. Yeah. But no, it, it they 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 like totally wanted to jam things in that weren't in the book to make it make it a a, a real jump scare movie. Um yeah. And they didn't want the old- to, they didn't want to do too much character characterization. So they pretty much threw the black kid under the bus. Yeah. The only things that were truly scary in this film were uh, over the top bullying and a horny father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, there's there's nothing in this film that is in any way frightening. Nothing that'll leave a mark. No. Yeah. No, it. <sighs> I use the cookie word cookie cutter too often, you know, but, but these characters didn't have any depth to them. I, 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 at least I wasn't getting it, you know, any depth that mattered for anything. Okay. Guess what? Henry Bowers has an abusive father. Surprise, fucking surprise, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't get get into the depth of it the way the way you do in the book. You didn't even get into it. They, you know, that was the good thing. They didn't do much with Henry Bauer in the original miniseries. You know, but, yeah. But anyway, I, I I wasn't a fan. I again, some of the effects looked good, but it's like that's not close to what was happening, and the whole ending. Well, you really need to have everybody. You, you really need to have so, so, do something with the ending. Yeah, because I can't believe Stephen King wrote that ending. Yeah, you 
I mean, yeah. so, so yeah, again, Stephen King can't write an ending for shit. And I'm, I'm really kind of concerned about him writing an ending that's like, you know what? Now all the boys fucked the little girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, this is the way out. Now that we've had sex, there's <laughs> the exit right there, clearly labeled exit we should have yeah yeah we could have easily gotten out of here without the gangbang but whatever <laughs> so here's a question for you bunny they perfectly separated the kids section from the adult section yeah. leaving it open for a sequel or two unfortunately so here's here's a an important question okay yeah <clears throat> what do they call the sequel I would go with it's. It's that's good. Yeah, I that's would go. Good. I would go with it's. Yeah, or uh, like I don't. I, I don't know about it too. You know, or it part two. Either of those seem like weird or cop out. Or, or, okay, or okay, wait a second, wait a second. We could, no, I think we got to add a tagline. I think that's where we're, we're going here. It's got to be something like it too. It's my two cents. Ooh, nice. Yeah, nice. See, see, because he's Pennywise. Yeah. You know. yeah. It to Electric Boogaloo. Uh -huh. Or, uh, 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 how about this? It's middle aged. <laughs> so you just have the, the it part in that, like, red it font. Yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 or how about it to. More soccer mom fapping material. Or how about this? Them. <laughs> Them. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Yeah. They would have to get a little girl who screams in it. Yeah. At least once. I mean, it's it's perfect for this movie. Yeah. But that's all I've got for this week's film. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, I'm not looking forward to another one. And if, let me put it this way, Deanna, I'm open to an explanation. There you go. There okay. you go. Okay. I'll see. I'll see. I'll see if I can uh, scrounge up one. <laughs> so, uh, y you said you were disappointed. Hold on to that disappointment. Cause we need to talk about next week. Okay. Okay. There's a movie that I've always seen, you know, in in uh, on Netflix, and I'm like, ah, eh, maybe one of these days. Yeah, maybe one of these days. I, I'm in no rush because this is horrible, but maybe <laughs> one of these days. And uh, apparently, it's being removed on December first, which is weird because I think it might be a Christmas movie. But it's being removed on December 1st, so if we're going to do it, we need to do it now. Are you talking about The Grinch? Hell no. I okay. hate all <laughs> fucking uh, Dr. Seuss movies with, with a passion, and no, I'm not talking about that. Okay. <laughs> no, this is worse. All right. Unfortunately, next week, toys. Toys. That's the Robin Williams one, right? Yes, it's the Robin Williams one. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Robin Williams, uh, uh, Joan Cusack, and LL Cool J. Wow, how could that <laughs> trio not be a massive blockbuster success? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've I've watched it before and have very little remembrance. Yeah, that that's not a cast. That's a that's a fever induced nightmare hallucination. <laughs> Ooh, hello, it's me, Robert Williams. I'm here with weird looking, strange faced woman and rapper LL Cool J. We're going to play with toys for an hour and forty five minutes. Yeah, at that's a cost of two hundred million dollars. That that's where you're trying to make your money by by getting as large a demographic as you can. Yeah, you know, it's it's like, 
Okay, it's a kid's movie, but we need something for the adults. Starring Robin Williams. Uh, but what about feminists? Joan Cusack is a strong woman. Let's get her in there. What about okay. gangbangers? <laughs> LL Cool J. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but what about kids? We'll make it about toys, but what yeah. about holidays? It's a Christmas movie, but what about... <laughs> uh, what about these war toys are being made? And it, it, yeah, it, it, it's a real weird ball of nonsense. Yes. Yes. That. Okay. I could do it. it. I could do this. Yeah. I, I, yeah. No, it's, it, it, it'll be a good episode because the movie sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how this thing works. Yeah. I'm just not looking forward to having to see this fucking movie again. Although I will say this. <laughs> I hate to bring it back around here, uh-huh. Bunny, but Deanna hates it if she is eating more than one food and the food starts touching each other on the plate. Really? We'll okay. go fucking nuts about that. If, like if she has uh, it, it, like a mashed potatoes and then she has some steak over here and then over here she has some green beans they cannot touch each other oh so if if a if potato gets on a string bean she can't she can't have that yeah basically Uh uh-huh okay And, and and i had never seen anyone do that before except for LL Cool J's character in Toys. <laughs> and he says, I'm a military man. I like my military meals. My green beans need to be secluded over here. <laughs> Free from attack from the applesauce or whatever. <laughs> but that's what he says. I'm a military man. I need a military meal. <laughs> and so I always thought of that whenever Deanna would freak out because her uh, her mac and cheese is touching her corn. Does does she dip though? I I I don't know because we're talking about Deanna when she was like eight, nine, ten years, ten, twelve years old. Now she's freaking nineteen, and and I don't know if she still does these things. If she still has the same. I mean, because like, occasionally I'll cut off a piece of meat and I'll want potatoes up on that shit. Yeah. You know, or applesauce. You mentioned applesauce. Pork goes in the applesauce. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if she does. I don't know if she does. Yeah. I'll have to ask her. Applesauce is the first dipping sauce. Yeah. Y- you got to get the maple syrup on the bacon or sausage. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. have to ask her. <laughs> it, I, I, I was not expecting Deanna to be so much of a focus on this episode, but <laughs> it's her fault for hating Tim Curry. Yes, I don't know why she wants Tim Curry to die. Yeah, I don't know what Tim Curry has ever done to her. Yeah. So yeah, that's on her. Yes, this whole thing is just on her conscience. So next week, next week. Next week, we are talking about Pizzagate. We are unfortunately watching Robin Williams' toys. Uh, we've got another Mandela effect in popular music. Ah. I'm excited about And I am so excited about this. Next week, we have another installment of the Crazy Christian Book Club. Ah. I have been sitting on this for a while. It's been difficult to not share this on Facebook and not share this on Instagram, but I have been sitting on this because that's how fucking good this is. This is hilarious. Yeah. This is the funniest shit imaginable. You are not going to believe this. Okay. I was, I was, reading some of this to Natasha and she's just typing, talking to her supernatural friends. And I'm like, honey, let me tell you about this book. It's called blank. And it's about this. Let me read you the back. And then eventually just the typing stops. (laughs) And she's like, what the fuck book is this, Steve? And I'm like, it was an order. It came in. It's a print on demand book. You're not 
I, I'm so excited for next week and the crazy Christian book club. Oh God, especially a print on demand book. That sounds, that's going to be good. Especially, especially a print on demand book. This is without a doubt, like the best one we've ever had. <laughs> oh, cool. Super excited. Very so that's cool. next week. We're going to have a very exciting next week. Uh, despite Robin Williams is freaking toys movie, but you know, now that we're nearing the end of this episode, now that we're looking back really yes. on this episode, oh, the fun we've had, the laughs, the tears. I cried a little bit. I peed I, a little I, bit. I, I did cry, and I'm I'm peeing a little bit right now. Yeah, but <laughs> back at this wonderful episode, I gotta say this has been a pretty damn good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Yeah, I concur. I concur. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do swabbles and poop Thank you for the assist, Bella. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do